Uh, this video on optimization tackles a problem that is uh, quite a bit harder than really anything I've looked at. And part of the reason it's hard is because you're not really given a whole lot. Uh, up until now, we've been given a, a, a problems that have had quite a bit of information in them. Uh, and this one's going to be a very generalized problem. So right at first, we say make a list of all variables and values of known variables. Well, we really don't have uh, any variables. We happen to have a radius, and that's it. And so what we might want to start doing then is just put that down. Just to kind of stick with our our uh, uh, methodologies and uh, stay in in the zone as far as these uh, five rules that we've come up with. Uh, in here, we're going to have to put one more one more rule though, and that is draw a picture. <laughs> I mean, really, it's it's tough to think about this stuff in the abstract. If you can possibly draw a picture. Draw a picture, please. It'll save you a lot of time and effort. Uh, number two, it says determine the equations needed for, to be optimized according to the variables. Okay, well now, we, we only have a variable, a, a, a variable. And so I think before we really start labeling our variables, we probably want to get away for a uh, look as to how this thing might, uh, might act. And so we'll carefully draw a fairly good sized sphere, if you will. Okay, and so we have its equator coming around front here. Okay, so now we have a cone inside that. Now here's the thing. Don't suppose anything yet. Simply draw a cone in. Do not put it on the equator because that's probably not going to be where the maximum volume would sit. And so I want to be very cautious of this, but then I'm going to draw my vertex at the top there. And I might, what I might do too is I might just say, oh, okay, just to give myself a, a hint of, hey, this is in three dimensions, you know, draw another small, uh, small circle up there. And now this is a right. Uh, circular cone, and so the height is, simp is simply the uh, uh, the normal to the plane of the bottom here. And if you haven't heard that circumstance before, the normal is simply 90 degrees to the plane. Uh, if you have never taken a physics course, that sort of thing, um, then you may not have heard the normal, but uh, if you've had a linear algebra course, uh, then you probably have. And so from the center of that circle uh, as as the base of the right circular cone, uh, we're going to throw a height up through there. And I'm going to call this H for height. And now we want to be very, very cautious here. So uh, H is equal to my height. By the way, this video is going to take at least two parts, uh, just because there are a lot of things that we need to uh, to draw out here and, and to really nail down before we can even get to the math. And so I have a radius here. Now remember, this radius is the radius of the sphere. And so that is on the, uh, the equatorial plane of the sphere, not the cone. Now the cone, however, has some other value of its radius. And I'm going to assume it's different. So I'm going to choose a green color here, and I'm going to draw in the radius of the cone, and I'm going to label that X. And so that my radius, and so I've got to change this definition here. This is my sphere radius. Whoops, might help if I spelled sphere right. Sphere, almost did it again. And now I have my uh, cone radius, this being, of course, the radius of the circular base of the cone. And this is going to be x. So now we need some way to, well, let's go ahead, tell you what, let's just go ahead right now and, and, and see what we need. Uh, we have 
uh, radius r, but let's go ahead and, and, and do step two. Step two says determine the equations needed to be optimized according to the variables. Okay, well, now I have three variables. Uh, if I just uh, take a look at the cone itself, then I look at the volume of the cone is equal to one third, the other third, the kind with a three on the bottom, uh, the area of the base, which is pi x squared, times the height. Well, again, you know, we, we're working in single variable calculus here, and we haven't had a chance to take a look at uh, multivariate and partial derivatives and that sort of thing. And so we want to be, we, we can't leave it in this form. We, we have to somehow get it in the form of r and x. Now you might say, well, why r? Well, technically, r is not a variable. It's, it's the known radius of the sphere. And so it's really a constant. So we can express h as, as a combination between our variable and the constant. And then from there, we can find it later. So be, just be very careful of what the variable is. And I mean, because I have such an issue here with this, I'm going to highlight that and say, hey, this is a constant. Kind of like k. k is another good name for a constant. All right, so now uh, going to our next item up for bid, number three, most of the time you'll need to have at least one supporting equation. And now here we need the supporting equation will relate this, this secondary uh, uh, variable in terms of the primary and, and any constants that might, uh, might come into play. This is the part where it takes just a little bit of thought. So now we have this. Now keep in mind, x is a radius, and it can come from anywhere. I mean, it can come from here. Uh, if you can picture this thing in 3D, it can come from here, it can come from back here. It come from way over here. It does not have to touch the sphere. However, the radius on the sphere also does not have to touch the sphere. It's here, um, uh, be along the, equ uh, the equatorial plane of the sphere. It can also come over here, over here, but most importantly, over here. This is R. Okay. Now you might say, well, why does that matter? Well, because we have a certain issue here. See, we know the height of the cone from the equatorial plane of the of the sphere up to the peak of the cone. It's the radius. So that part is R. The problem is we don't know what this lower part is. And so that's what we're really trying to find is what's the value of this lower part? This is R. Okay, and so now if we get that lower part, then, then we can just add the two together and we're done. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do that. Now, we have h, which is the height. We also happen to have between the, the height uh, segment and the radius segment on the area of the cone, or on the base of the cone, uh, we have an, a, a right angle, and so we can express that here. So now we have a triangle. If you look at it kind of from a, uh, a three-dimensional aspect, but if, you, if you're standing just in front of it and that's all you can see, when you look at a basketball, you're not seeing a ball. You are seeing a circle. It appears to be two-dimensional. That's what we're doing here. Effectively, we are seeing a triangle within a circle. And so now we're just trying to say things about the triangle. Well, we can say things about the triangle. It's a right triangle, and therefore it obeys Pythagorean's theorem. And when it does, h, in this case, this, this I'll call this h prime, which is that height between uh, that height between the equatorial uh, uh, or the center of the sphere to the center of the uh, the area of the base or the center of the base of the cone. And so it's just that little spot there. Well, we've got R here on the hypotenuse. And so that simply means that H prime squared is equal to R squared minus X squared. 
Okay, well, that means that h prime is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. And now if we include the fact that h has to have an additional length of r, which is the radius of the sphere, up to the, up to the vertex of the cone, then we have h is equal to r plus h prime, which is really just r plus the square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay, so in this video, all we've done is set up the problem and, and translated it. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of this and see if we can't, uh, can't make something work here. And so just to kind of clarify here, I've got uh, one-third pi x squared, which is from my original volume, and now I'm just plugging this in for h, which is r plus the square root of r squared minus x squared. And so that is the, that's going to be the formula that we use to optimize.